I'm writing this so that I, I so that I can keep a bit of my sanity. This is a suicide note, and <laughs> there's no hope for me. Th this is the end of me. So, why am I writing this? I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I just want to get this down so that others may see why death brings suffering. Why you can't let one person in your person die in your life, if at all preventable. Fucking God. My daughter got home from school at about 2 p.m. Her being in a kindergarten class, they sent the little text home before the others. So, I, I thought I could get an hour or two of uh, some TV movies before she got home. I finished at about 1.40 and exactly after I turned off the television, a ring came to my door. I walked to the door and saw a cute little girl and her mother selling Girl Scout cookies. I happily bought them and started to eat the tagalongs. Now, I gave the little girl a tip because when delivering cookies in the heat of Florida, you have to have a bit of decency. After about 25 minutes or so, my daughter got home. <sighs> Hello, Daddy, she said, throwing herself on me. I chuckled and, you know, got her some lunch. She, it was definitely a normal day. Until that night. At around 1.40 a.m., my daughter started screaming bloody murder, and I quickly jumped out of bed, and just as fast as I jumped out of bed, I was in a room. I threw the door open, and I saw my daughter huddled up in a little ball in the corner of her bed. I grabbed her quickly and quietly and held her against my chest to hopefully calm her down, and I also turned on the light. What I saw next was fucking scarring and just mentally bone-chilling that I... She must have been fucking scarred of whatever she saw was horrid. What I saw was red paint written on the wall with the following sentence. Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride. The sins of your forefathers, the sins you can't hide. What in the hell was that supposed to mean? The seven sins? Now, my daughter started hyperventilating, and she was saying daddy, 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 daddy over and over and over again. I grabbed her asthma inhaler and tried to give it to her, but she was so far into the asthma attack that she really couldn't do much. I ran to my car, and I placed her in the back seat, and I drove as fast as I could. I was driving like a madman down the road. We were instantly admitted, and she was saved from going into cardiac arrest. It turns out that my daughter, at the age of five, was suffering from heart disease. It was about seven years later, and during those seven years, things started to go really, really bad. It was around Christmas time. I had a right wife named Samantha, a son named Gregory, and my daughter Haley, which was 12 years old and Gregory was about four. I was loving my wife. The kids were happy. Samantha and I were happy. It was great, except for years previous. The first year, all the women around me just became aroused and flirted with me consistently. You wanna know why that's bad? It's because every fucking one of them that I rejected killed themselves in one horrid or grotesque way. One got herself with a kitchen knife and then wrote my name on her walls while another hung herself from the fucking gutter on her house. Again, writing my name on the side of the goddamn house. The second year, my daughter became infatuated with food, so much that her heart condition worsened. She was rushed in the hospital over 10 times during the course of this year, but when the year was up, she came anorexic and stopped eating altogether. The third year, my house went into foreclosure and I became very, very stingy with money and food. We later found out that the land, that the landowner of our house had the rights to our land and was stealing money out of my credit card for over two years. I'm lucky that, I'm lucky that I met Samantha and she let my daughter and I move into her house. We married in December and we had my son in October. The fourth year, I was called by many talent agencies asking me about my amazing singing skills, which I shown off when I sat in with a band about a month before the year started. The thing is, when I said no, they kept calling me and calling and calling until they became violent, calling me foul names. One of them even tried to kill me right outside my house. He shot at me with a handgun and clipped my goddamn ear. 
The fifth year, I became incomplexibly angry at my daughter and my wife for just everything. I became abusive in the month of December. But in that same month, I fell down the stairs and suffered some brain damage. But it's a little damage that it gave me a li just gave me little memory of years past. I only could recall this because my daughter told me about it. The sixth year, my daughter became jealous of my son getting all the attention. I tried to tell her that. I tried to tell her that babies needed more attention than 10 year olds, but she just became so angry and eventually violent that she even eventually ran away. I, I called the Center for missing, missing and Exploited Children. They found her in an abandoned house next to us, hiding in one of the closets. She was starving and eventually kicked her anorexia. It was the seventh year now, and nothing really happened at all. Until that night, at exactly 1.40 a.m., and that's when shit hit the fan. I heard my daughter screaming, a blood-curdling scream, and I quickly ran into her room and to see something that broke my heart and terrifies me to this day. A man stood at her, stood looking over her at least, looking at her in her bed, holding a steak knife. He grabbed her and ripped her open with the blade. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's hard to even think about it now, but he took all that remained of her. Jesus Christ. I was so proud of her. I was so proud of my baby. It's the eighth year now. My wife left me. My son barely knows me, and I curse myself every day. My late wife, who bore my daughter, I knew that it was you who gave me this goddamn curse. You always hated me. <laughs> I couldn't save you. I never could. And now you hate me for it. So now, <laughs> here I am, repeating the cycle, and I end it all. Hello, um, this is Gregory, the boy in the story. I'm now about 36 years old, and I was given this recording from the police about a year ago. This suicide note was written by my father back in 1980. I was only five years old when my mother and I got the news about my father. She cried for about an hour, and you know what? I'm gonna be honest, I was alone, vulnerable, and scared too. And it wasn't until 10 years later that my mother gave me the real story. You see, she cried crocodile tears when she heard the news. The only emotion she harbored for that man was hate, and I can't really exactly blame her after. <sighs> See, my father did all those horrible things you saw in the story. My father went insane at 1.40 a.m. in 1973, the date of our, well, the date of his first wife's anniversary. Now, the psychologist saw him, and when his wife died, he was suspected of his wife's death and was told that was all his fault. He created an excuse and, well, based his so-called revenge on the seven deadly sins. The night of his wife's anniversary, he gave his daughter, well, shots of steroids, which gave her the heart condition. He killed every woman who flirted with him for one year, making their deaths look like fucking suicides. The second year, he stuffed his daughter, his own goddamn daughter, full of food, making her eat large portions. And he became upset that it did not kill her, so he made her throw up all her food after every meal when the year was up. The third year, he sold his house and let my mom use the money from his credit card. He also became abusive many years later. The fourth year, he claimed that he was the most talented singer ever, calling talent agencies and such. When they turned him down, he would call them foul names, and he even tried to kill one man. He shot one of, he shot a man right outside of his studio, clipping him in the air. The fifth year, and one of the most horrid years, he, he tried to kill my mom and late sister many times. But my mother retaliated, pushing him down the stairs, and he acquired some short short term memory loss after that and couldn't really remember much about remember much about the month the sixth year he drove my sister out of the house calling her a stupid bitch or a fucking whore she 
She hid in a house next door, and when my father called the Lost Child Agency, the forensics team quickly turned her back into, well, our house, which my mother frequently called hell. The seventh year, my dad was very, very tame. Now, he became a very nice man at that point, and he was very happy and proud of his behavior. That was until 1.40 a.m. on the night of his wife's anniversary. He killed my sister with a kitchen knife and fled with her remains to the Bahamas. No, I can't, I, I still have trouble believing this story to this very day. But at the beginning of the eighth year, he killed himself. Now, the police, you know, force says that it was a suicide, but <laughs> he created a makeshift noose out of an organic material. <sighs> they all lie, because I know the rope was my sister.